Welcome everyone to the Devotion Studio. I'm Max. Today I'm here with Martin Lemay. Hi Martin. Hi man. How are Hi. You? I'm good, thanks and you? <laughs> Great. Okay. Martin is Devolution's Chief Security Officer. Uh, first time joining us in the Devotion Studio, recording a video with us. Yes, a premiere. And why are we here today, Martin? We're talking about the uh, latest breach at LabCorp, uh, uh, like two or three weeks yeah, ago. July 13th. Uh, from the, uh, it's, it was uh, basically the, the uh, Samsung ransomware that infected the, uh, the network. Um, it's basically the same ransomware that uh, attacked the uh, city of Atlanta mm -hmm. a couple of months ago. So uh, the, the most important thing here to, to understand is that the attack vector is still RDP. And I, I'm a bit shocked to see that RDP is still uh, uh, being exposed at least. Yeah, being exposed and still uh, a valid attack vector for, yeah. uh, for malware from the internet. So, so what, we, what we wanted to do today is to maybe give a brief on the different threats that uh, can cause RDP to your to your infrastructure. Many of you are well aware of the situation, just wanted to bring uh, our opinion and Mar Martin's opinion on what to do or at least what are the threats that we can get. Yes, absolutely. So the first thing to understand about you know RDP access is that many people are talking about brute forcing. Mm -hmm. Brute forcing which is having a small list of valid users and having a long list of passwords and then you try all these passwords uh, until you get a valid one and get into the yeah. system. But not many people are really aware about the password spraying technique where you have a long list of users and a small list of passwords. And that is really efficient because once you throw your passwords list on, on, uh, with that technique, you don't lock any accounts. Yeah. So basically, you are a bit more stealthy if the business is not aware of that technique because it's not monitoring that yeah. action there and you can still get into the, uh, the system. And it's important to be aware that most users use weak passwords. Yeah. So uh, you use the month and year, for example, mm -hmm. and you may, might get an instant hit if you have a valid list of users of 100 or 200 users, which is pretty easy to obtain yeah. uh, with social media like LinkedIn, uh, Facebook, where many people brag about the, uh, their, uh, their employers and where they yeah. work. So it's pretty easy to get a big list of get potential Get your hands uses. on yeah. this list and then try different yeah. sort of passwords. Yeah, even generic accounts for, you know, standard services like Microsoft SQL Server. So you'll have an account which is usually called MSSQL SRV yeah. and things okay. like that. So these two techniques can be used, but, you know, you need to be aware of it when exposing RDP, uh, especially if your system behind it, your Windows, is, is tied to an active directory. Mm -hmm. and. Um, this can be a big problem if it's not configured properly because you can brute force any account in the Active Directory from that RDP Got access. It. So even though you use uh, a separate domain, if there is a trust relationship between the two domains, that may put you at risk your corporate domain even though you're using a DMZ domain. So that's basically uh, one of the, the, the common threats of exposing RDP. But the uh, another one is also to understand is that RDP is still a software. And software vulnerabilities are quite common nowadays, yeah. right? It's not surprising to have vulnerabilities. If we look back last year, what happened with the uh, NSA leak uh, tools, mm -hmm. uh, the Eternal Blue exploit that came out in a while. Yeah. yeah. They got that information on their hands for quite a while before. Yeah, we don't know exactly uh, when they, 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 they weaponized that, that mm -hmm. exploit and uh, for how long it was there, but nobody knew it. Exactly. And once it, it was known and once it was leaked, it was weaponized days later <laughs> uh, by other uh, malwares and yeah. uh, malware actors and they spread to the entire internet and everything that was, uh, every Windows boxes that exposed port 445, uh, well, they, they were all compromised. Mm -hmm. um, there were also some phishing campaigns where they delivered the malware to, uh, to end users and when it was executed was infecting the whole internal network. Mm -hmm. Now, the point is, we didn't know about this vulnerability before. How do we know if RDP exposes such a vulnerability right now? Is there other vulnerabilities ah. that we don't know or we're not aware of? That's yeah, I'm not actually... talking necessarily about NSA, it can be anyone, but I mean, is, will it be such surprising that 
in, in the upcoming years, yeah. we find a element in RDP that will leverage a remote code execution yeah. to, to attackers. So, so, so once we know that, and I've, I've, you know, I've heard many times 2FA might be part of the solution. Yeah. I think it can, but still there are other, some ways to configure it at least to make it more secure. Yeah, well, the, the important thing to understand in, in using MFA is that you are preventing unauthorized access in case of a, a, a malicious actor have yeah. your credentials. Mm -hmm. However, that still exposes the service, uh, the software to the internet. The problem just talked before is still there. Also, you need to understand that the other services that you're using on your perimeter might put at risk the service that you have to FA enable on, on a system. Just tell you a bit, uh, a story that happened two years ago uh, with me and a colleague of mine, uh, we found a, a mail server that didn't have the 2FA, but the VPN access did have 2FA. Uh -huh. So uh, using the password spraying technique, we did find valid credentials for one of the users. Mailbox. Yeah, mailbox. And surprisingly, when that employee got hired, all the configuration steps and secrets were sent in the email the first day he came in. So since we had access to his mailbox, there we go. gathered that information, installed a soft token on our phone, and did get access to the VPN, although it was protected with mm -hmm. two-factor authentication. So it's, to me, it's uh, two-factor authentication is great, but you need to understand the threat model of your threat model from the perimeter and make sure that the other services that contain sensitive data are also protected with two-factor authentication. And what would be a best practice in that case? You want to set up 2FA? You set up 2FA to every critical asset. Every asset where you can get sensitive information on the perimeter should be protected with two-factor authentication. Not only one thing that you do not want someone to connect on. Uh -huh. And usually the email should be, you know. <laughs> also protected, that, right? Yeah, the way to go. So um, yeah. that's basically what happened there. Um, and um, yeah, so other myths are also, um, you know, pre, pre, I don't know how to say this, but uh, many uh, administrators don't really understand also how we can leverage an RDP access to pivot from there and, and go uh, further in the internet. Another example is for SCADA networks um, for energy companies or, uh, or uh, transport where they might have controllers uh, in a separate subnet and using a John box to access mm -hmm. to it through RDP. And uh, this network shouldn't have access to internet. And usually they, they do that pretty well. They isolate the environment from the internet. However, it's important to know that RDP has a cool feature called clipboard, mm -hmm. right? Yep. So nothing prevents a malicious actor to take a binary file, convert it to text, and send it to the clipboard. Mm -hmm. On the other side, Windows has, you know, those cool native applications that you can use to convert it back to a binary file and execute it. So you can basically transfer information through RDP and transfer files. And you can also you leverage that technique to have a communication channel between a, a trusted zone and highly, uh, an untrusted zone, sorry, and a highly secured zone. Okay, got it. All right, so I think, is there anything else you wanted to share today? Yeah, do not, I mean, uh, from my point of view, uh, defense in depth is always the best approach here and put all critical services behind a VPN. Uh, VPNs are meant for that job. They, they are software too. I mean, we must understand that a VPN is a software mm -hmm. too, exposed on the internet. However, it's made for that. It's hardened a lot. It's usually uh, Linux based. Uh, you, uh, if you breach that, if there is a software issue, you are breaching the, the appliance or whatever yeah. you're using uh, for VPN. But at least the uh, uh, threat actors don't have access to your corporate domain exactly. or a system that might have credentials to leverage on your, on your infrastructure. It's just a, a VPN access that can be easily flagged for any uh, malicious activity from there. Very interesting. Thanks for, uh, thanks for your time today. If you want more information, we have a blog post on blog.devotions.net on In the Trenches. You can click on the link below in the description. Martin, it was nice, really nice meeting you today. Thanks for uh, <laughs> taking the time to come here and uh, we'll sure have other opportunities to, uh, to
to connect and record other videos in the future. All right, thank Thanks. you. Thanks, bye.